they marveled that he was talking with a woman. He didn't have to say that, did he? Could have passed right over that like normal as could be. And he, he paused and took note. He drew our attention to their amazement that he, Jesus, our Lord, was talking to a woman. Now, remember in verse 31, they called Jesus rabbi. So Jesus, in their mind, is like the people they know, namely rabbis. Rabbis, in particular, men in general, didn't talk to women in public, first century, especially Judaism. Many of them might have done this out of seemliness, cultural appropriateness. Many did it out of misogyny. You know that word? Deep distrust, disrespect, dislike of women. In its worst form, we saw it this week, right? George Sodini killed three women in an L.A. fitness gym in Pittsburgh, just outside Pittsburgh. This is what he wrote in his journal. He wounded ten, killed three. Just opened fire on a, on a women's exercise class. His diary. No girlfriend since 1984. Who knows why? I'm not ugly or too weird. No sex since July 1990 either. I was 29, over 18 years ago. I actually look good. I dress good. I'm clean shaven, bathe, touch of cologne. Yet 30 million women rejected me over an 18 or 25 year period. And he hated women. And he killed indiscriminately. Three of them, and I don't know how seriously the other ten are hurt. His disgust falls across all women, and he kills. Now, I am not saying, please don't go out of here saying that's the way John views first century people or Jews or rabbis. However, uh, he was an extreme pathological case of something real in all cultures. Women were not taught the Torah in Judaism, and they were not treated in general with respect, tenderness, appreciation. Jesus treated women differently, and John wants to draw your attention to that. Jesus treated women differently. His mother... These are just illustrations that you could go read about. His mother, Mary Magdalene, the woman bent over for 18 years, the Syrophoenician woman, Mary and Martha, the widow with two coins, and others. And the main point that flows out of all of his interaction with women is God created man, male and female. In his own image, he created them of equal value and equal dignity with differing complementary honorable roles. And he put in motion in his coming and in his cross and in his speech and in his behavior, he put in motion a reversal of the fall. And what the fall did, this horrific corruption that has come into female hearts and male hearts. We are male and female fallen and corrupt and sinful. And the form it takes since the fall is that women are inclined by sin to be either helplessly coquettish or brashly domineering. And men are inclined by the fall to be either timidly passive or harsh and demanding. Sin could distort in either direction, male or female. And what Jesus did was set in motion a, a healing of those sins, whether it's on the passivity side or the ugly, aggressive side of male or female. Wherever Christianity has become deeply rooted in a culture, treatment of women has improved manifestly. I don't know if you saw the horrific film 
the stoning of Saraya M. For your own sake, I hope you didn't, because it is the worst thing I have ever seen in my life. And uh, to my dismay, I took my wife to see it because they were showing it to pastors. And it's not sexy. It's just the most violent, horrible thing I've ever seen, worse than the passion of the Christ, which I am glad I watched. Um, What that movie is intended to do and did is give us a glimpse of the dismal plight of millions of women today hidden away in cultures around the world where Jesus is not known or trusted or followed. It is a horrific, dismal plight. The stoning of Saraya M. Wherever his gospel has gone, wherever his word has gone and taken root and begun to hold sway, men treat women with respect. They take humble, courageous initiative to protect women. They create stable, loving families as leaders who love and are like Jesus, in which covenant faithfulness of husband and wife displays to the world the mystery of Christ and his church. Read C.S. Lewis two weeks ago who said, the ideal marriage is one that's most like a crucifixion, meaning the husband dies for her. That is unspeakably revolutionary in every culture, including ours. That's the way Jesus meant it to be. It's not a throwaway sentence, I believe, in this text when he says they were amazed he was speaking to a woman. 